Welcome to this edition of Live from the California Academy of Sciences. Today, we're taking a virtual expedition to one of the least visited islands on the planet to learn more about one of its most charismatic creatures. Academy scientist Jane Nichols has been studying sea turtles around the world for almost 20 years. These reptiles, he says, are not only important in their own right, they're also a poster species for ocean conservation. They represent so much more than themselves. They represent the, sort of the health of the ocean. They represent our connection with the ocean. There are cultures all over the world who have very special relationships with sea turtles, kind of as their, their totem species. Uh, they, they celebrate them and sing about them and dance about them. So this human sea turtle attraction has been going on for a very long time. Sadly, all seven species of sea turtles in the world are now either threatened or endangered victims of pollution, bycatch from commercial fishing operations, and overhunting. Recently, Nichols was asked by the Biosphere Foundation to take a look at a remote group of islands where the turtle population was plummeting. Located east of Singapore in Indonesia, the Anambas Archipelago is a group of about 250 small islands, most of which are uninhabited by humans. Darai Island, however, the most important nesting site for sea turtles in the archipelago, is inhabited by a single man. There's one man who lives on it, and his job is to collect all of the turtle eggs every night. His name is Pak Lahani, and he's employed by the island's five beachfront property owners to harvest the eggs that are laid on their land. A sprightly 92-year-old, he has lived on the island for more than 40 years, and in that time, he has seen the turtle population decrease by over 75%. Not surprising, Nichols says, based on what we know about sea turtle population dynamics. Um, turtles lay a certain number of eggs. It takes a certain amount of time for those eggs to hatch. It takes a certain amount of time for those hatchlings to grow up. And if you eat all of the eggs, eventually you won't have any turtles. In an attempt to turn this trend around, Nichols brought all five landowners together for the first time to talk about sea turtle conservation. Instead of statistics, he brought a home video that he'd filmed during his visit to Durai Island. And I don't think they'd ever seen their island uh, in that light. And nobody, certainly nobody has ever made a documentary about Durai Island. And uh, they saw the coral reefs underwater, they saw the turtles nesting, they saw Pankahani at work, they saw the school kids back in, in the main villages uh, learning about sea turtles and, and celebrating them. And I think it really felt good to see themselves as the group of people who could save, it. could save it. To help the island owners move away from egg collecting, Nichols proposed a more sustainable source of income. So one of the things that you're going to be doing going forward to help financially is bringing groups of eco-tourists right. to the islands. When does your first trip take place? Well, this February, uh, a group of people are going to go and, and, and visit the Anambas Islands and one of the things on the agenda is to, to go to Durai Island and spend some time with Paklahani and help him and study the turtles, help protect them and, and, and by doing so uh, leave some, some, some money behind basically to pay Paklahani uh, and, and pay the island owners for the opportunity to camp on the island and walk around at night and see the turtles nesting, uh, perhaps release some of the hatchlings, and, and support the conservation work that uh, Paklahani, uh, the island caretaker, and, and the five owners are, are now doing. Does Paklahani seem excited about this new plan? He's, Paklahani seems like um, this was what it was all about starting 40 years ago. He, he, uh, he's a happy guy. Uh, and he really likes the turtles, and it's just, it seems like the natural, really seems like the natural sort of next curve in, in his, his path. And, uh, and I think he'll, he'll wind up his life um, feeling pretty good about his experience on, on Durai Island. And that makes me feel really good. Although he may still indulge in an occasional turtle egg, Pak Lahani's days of stripping the beaches entirely of their eggs are now over, Nichols says. He's a turtle protector now, and he's proud of it. And uh, it's, I think it's what, he's, what he knows is right and it's what he's wanted to do. Uh, he just didn't have the power to, to make that happen uh, and keep his job. 
Now he does. While the turtles that nest on Durai Island still face other threats, including increasing amounts of plastic polluting their waters, they now have one significant thing going for them, a safe place to lay their eggs. The work that Nichols has done on Durai Island is a model for what could be done all over the world. Reporting from the California Academy of Sciences, this is Stephanie Stone.